There are five different ways that you can get clients for your business. One, we have cold outreach. Two, we have making content on social media. Three, running paid ads. Four, we have getting affiliates and partners. And five, we have customers telling other customers, AKA referrals. In this video, I'm gonna be going over every single one, what they are and how they work. This is easily gonna be the most value that I have ever dropped in a single video by far. So definitely stick around till the end. Now, before we jump in, I just wanna preface the video by saying you don't only want to be doing one form of client acquisition. You want to be doing multiple forms of client acquisition to increase your success rate. So for example, if you're doing cold calling, you want to be also be doing cold texting as well. Or if you're doing cold DMing and cold emailing, you also want to be making content as well. You don't want to just be doing one single method. And if there's only one thing that you take away from this video, please let it be that you should be following up with your prospects. If the person doesn't answer on the first time or the second time, you need to be following following up at least seven to 12 times. The statistics show that 80% of sales are not closed until the seventh to 12th follow-up. So please, regardless of the situation, always be following up with your prospect at least seven to 12 times. If you're not following up with your prospects, you might as well just be burning money. With that being said, let's jump right into the actual methods of client acquisition. One, we have outbound marketing, AKA cold outreach. Cold outreach is any method you use that you're reaching out to a complete stranger and offering them your service. Services. If you're a complete beginner, this is easily going to be your main and best source of client acquisition at first. So this consists of creating a list of prospects and then reaching out to them via cold calling, cold DMing, cold texting, cold emailing, and so on. There's a bunch of different ways that you can start finding these prospects and creating these lists. So the most basic method is by hand. You're going to be going on Google and manually doing a Google search of your niche. So for example, let's say you're working with plumbers. You're going to look up plumbers near me and you're going to look for the ones with low Google reviews, no website or maybe the ones that are ranking on page five or 10 of Google. Those obviously don't have a great online presence, but you don't have to disqualify any of the other ones. I would write down all of them, but prioritize the ones that I just explained before. You definitely don't want to disqualify any of the businesses, but those are just indicators that the business does not have a great online presence. Now, if you want to speed this process up a little bit, you can use something called a lead scraper. Now, what a lead scraper does, it will scrape all of the leads off of Google and Facebook for whatever keywords that you search. So you can go into your lead scraper and type in plumbers within 10 miles of Long Island, New York, and it will create a list for you of all of the plumbers within 10 miles of Long Island, New York. And it will give you this list with all of the businesses information. It gives you their name, their email, their phone number, and their website and any other information that you might need on them. So this is a huge time saver. You're not going to have to go through manually by hand and write them all down. This will create the list for you. I do have another video on the lead scraper that I use. I'll link that up top in case you want it. Now, once you have your list of prospects created, you're going to need to reach out to them. My favorite form of outreach is cold calling. It's very straightforward. Basically, cold calling, all you're doing, you're taking that list of prospects that you just created. You're going to be going through the list and calling each and every single one of them, seeing if they're interested in your services. And, and if they are, you're going to be getting them to book a call with you so that you can show them how the services work and eventually sell them your service. Now, pro tip here, you're going to want to focus more on building a relationship and building a connection with the prospect rather than just trying to force sell them your service. I see so many people get on the phone and they basically just start dumping information about what they're selling. The buyer does not care about what you're selling. You want to talk to them, build a relationship, figure out what they need and what they want before you start offering them your service. If you focus on that, it's going to remove so much of the friction of the actual cold call and you'll see things will flow much, much more naturally and much smoother. So the next form of cold outreach that we have is cold texting and cold DMing. Now, I do like this method more than cold emailing, but still, you're, if you're doing cold texting and cold DMing, you're going to want to pair this with something like cold calling as well to make it more efficient. You do not just want to be doing one form of outreach, like I said before, and you're just going to get a much higher close rate that way. And the same tip that I explained before applies here. You're going to want to focus more on building a relationship and building a connection with the prospect rather than trying to force sell them your service. I'm going to throw an example up on screen now, and as you can see, I don't just jump right in to the pitch. I open up with some context. I ask him a question and this is a really efficient way to open up the conversation. You're not acting like a typical salesman, like all the other salesmen that are just going to straight up cold DM them with the pitch right away. You're focusing more on that human to human connection and you'll notice that things flow way more naturally and way smoother when you do that. Now that brings us to the next form of outreach, cold email. Cold email is a good supplemental form of outreach, but if you're a beginner, I wouldn't focus on it too, too much for a few different reasons. With cold email, 
email, you want to have these really large lists of emails. And by large, I mean like 20, 30, 40,000 people on these lists. Because with cold emails, the open rate is only 20%. And compared to the average open rate of DMs and texts at 97%, in my opinion, it just makes way more sense if you're just starting out to mainly stick with the texting and DMing over cold emailing unless you have these really large lists. Now, with that being said, by all means, you can do all of these forms of outreach. You can add in. There's no harm in adding in emails. But if I did have to drop one method, I definitely would drop cold emails, especially if you're a beginner, you're going to be much better off with DMing, texting and calling over the emails. Now, the next section we have is inbound marketing. This is essentially any method you use where you put out content that creates a stream of leads flowing inbound. So basically any content that you put out on social media or your website or a blog that would cause leads to want to reach out to you. Now I can go on for hours about social media marketing and creating content. If you want me to make a video on that, drop a comment. But for now, I'll keep it somewhat brief. If you are going to be creating content for your brand, you're going to want to be building your own personal brand. So you're going to want to be posting face content. You don't want to be doing any no face content. That really isn't what converts. What converts is when you get in front of the camera and you just provide value to your target audience. So you're going to have all of this free value inside of your content. And at the end of your content, at the end of some of the pieces of content, you're going to want to have what's called a call to action. So that would essentially be telling your viewer to complete some sort of action. So typically that would be click my link in bio, sign up for my free guide, sign up for my free course, etc. So that free item that's going to be in the link in your bio is something called a lead magnet. Now your customers and your prospects and all of your viewers are going to want that free item. So in exchange for that free item, they're going to have to provide you with their email, their name, their phone number, just some sort of information so that now you know, okay, this person took action and went to your bio. They put in their information in order to get that free guide and say that free guide is tailored towards plumbers. Now, you know, this is a plumber that is looking to grow or scale his business. So now you have his information. It's a warm lead. He reached out to you first and then you can use his information to now reach back out to him, give him a phone call, shoot him a text and see if he's interested in your actual paid service. This is by far one of the best methods of client acquisition. It does take some time learning, getting used to. There's a lot of moving parts with content, but I think there is no harm in just giving it a shot. Your first 50 to 100 videos are going to suck. They're going to be terrible, but you'll start to get the hang of it. And you'd be surprised that just even one video that goes viral, how many inbound leads that that can get. Now, the other part of inbound marketing would be SEO in Google ranking, which is where your website's going to be listed on Google. So if you increase your SEO, you're going to rank higher. And if you increase your Google ranking, you're also going to rank higher. This is a little bit more of an in-depth topic, but I'll just keep it simple for now. The easiest ways that you can rank higher on Google is one, getting a lot of Google reviews and then replying to those Google reviews. So if you're just starting out in your business, get all of your friends and family to fill out a five-star review, write out a nice review, and then you're going to go through and reply to all of those. That's going to help you rank significantly higher in the Google ranking and the Google search without really doing much. Now, there is a whole lot more to SEO. That could be a whole nother video, but to keep it really simple, mainly what it is, is having a lot of keywords in your website. So things that your customers would be looking for on Google, you want to have those keywords all throughout your website on all different pages. And that's kind of SEO simplified. That's going to help you also rank a lot higher and show up for specific keywords when your customers are Googling it. Now, the next method I want to go over is networking. Networking is quite possibly one of the best methods of client acquisition for literally any business model. Specifically, when we're talking SaaS and SMMA, you cannot go wrong. Now, one way I like to network is inside Facebook groups. You'd go on Facebook, look up small business group, New York, or you'd look up, for example, your niche. So it'd be plumber group, New York, something like that. And you're going to join these groups. And these some of these groups can be absolute gold mines. You're going to join and you're just going to start looking through and just start networking within the group, start commenting on people's posts, start making posts that provide value to those groups, start networking with the owners and admins of these groups, because typically in these well kept, really active groups, the owners and admins are going to know a ton of business owners. So if you start getting to know the owners and admins, they can now refer you to all of their friends, all of these other business owners. So it just opens the door for so much opportunity. You can become the go to guy in all of these groups for marketing and software if you play it right. And at the same time, you can also use these groups to do outreach. So you can also network, but you can also go through this list and start cold DMing everybody in these groups. You can start cold calling them. You can do whatever. So you can double dip here. Now, the second place that you can network is kind of
kind of similar to number one, we have these actual in-person groups. So some of these Facebook groups actually host live events that you can go to in person. Absolutely phenomenal to go to. And also something called Chamber of Commerce. Now you can go on Google and look up Chamber of Commerce plus your city or your town. Most places across the US at least have these Chamber of Commerces. And it's literally just a place where all small business owners go to network. So you can go and now you have hundreds of other small business owners in the same place as you. You can go start networking. I've seen people leave these networking events with 20 to 30 different contacts of people that are super interested in purchasing their software. And that results in a few thousand dollars of monthly recurring revenue right off the bat just from going to these in-person events. That is by far one of the best methods. Do not sleep on the in-person events. If you have any opportunity to go to any of these live in-person events, 100% without a doubt, go to the event. So that leads me right into the next topic, which is referral programs and partnerships. So this is more for people that already have clients, but it also applies to people that don't have clients. So basically what this is, is offering someone an incentive to refer people to your program or your service. So for example, say I have a client that's a plumber and I say, hey, if you refer me to any of your friends that are also plumbers, I can give you a one month discount or I can give you 10% of his monthly recurring subscription. This gives them even more of an incentive. Say, I'll pay you every single month, 10% of the monthly fee that they're paying me if you refer your friends. And now he's gonna be like, oh, this is amazing. I already like your service and I was already going to refer you. Now I'm incentivized to do it. He's gonna go spread your service to everybody he knows. And like I said, if you're already doing a great job in fulfilling your service naturally, these business owners are going to be naturally inclined to refer you. But when you add in the incentive, it works like absolute magic. They will start referring you like crazy and you're only gonna be paying them a small percent and you're gonna be picking up so many more clients that way. Next up, we have paid advertising. That's essentially running ads on any of the platforms, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Google, etc. Now, I would not advise getting into paid advertising unless you have some capital to spend because especially in the beginning, you're going to be learning the process. You're going to be burning a lot of money in that process. So I would not recommend getting in unless you have some capital to burn, but it's also a great way to pick up some clients. I see so many lazy go out. They're like, Hey, I don't want to do, I don't want to cold call. I don't want to do anything. I'm just going to run paid ads and I'll have the clients come to me. I'm going to take my last hundred dollars and I'm going to spend that on Facebook ads and I'm going to get some clients. That is not how it works. You're just going to burn your last hundred dollars and it's just not the way to go. If you don't have a solid amount of money to test these ad creatives, test your follow-up process, do not do it. It's a little bit more complex than just putting a Facebook ad out on Facebook, letting it run and getting clients. So there's a lot of testing the actual will add creative itself. And then you have the follow-up process that you have to have dialed in after a lead gets into your ecosystem, after a lead fills out that contact form, and now you have their information. There's a whole follow-up process that goes into place that's going to help you convert at a higher percentage. And if you don't have that proper funnel set up and in place when you're running these ads, you're just going to be burning money. This is also another topic that I could go on for hours about. You want to see me do a separate video on that, drop a comment. But for now, I'll keep it brief. So if you're you're going to be running paid ads, this is what you want to do. One, you want to have at least six to eight different creatives that you can test in the actual campaign. So what I mean by that is have six to eight different images or videos that you're going to test and see which one performs better out of all of those six to eight. You don't want to just throw up one image or one video and hope it does good. You want to have six to eight to test with so you can figure out which one's going to be performing the best and then optimize for that and spend more money on that. Number two, you're going to want to call these leads within two to four minutes minutes of them coming in. And you're going to want to follow up with these leads. Like I said, in the beginning of the video, at least seven to 12 times within the first 30 to 45 days. So if they don't answer your first text, you want to continually follow up with them and try and ask engaging questions so that they want to reach back out to you in that first 30 to 45 days. That is essentially the simplified process of running paid ads. There's obviously a lot more to it, but that's the general outline of how the process works. That was pretty much a basic overview of all the different types of outreach. I can definitely make a video going in depth on each one. Like I said, if you want to see that, drop a comment. And if you're interested in getting started with Go High Level SaaS or running an SMMA using Go High Level, I have a free course and a Discord server linked down below, as well as a 30-day free trial for Go High Level. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great rest of your day.